Okay, y'all, this gets deep. Do you hear me? <laughs> I am over here studying history, business history, histories of war, and the Lord is really opening my eyes and really highlighting um, some things to me. And so I'm understanding the importance of history. It's just like the Old Testament being a foreshadow of the New Testament, what is to come. Ooh, I just thank you, Lord, for opening up my eyes in such a way that have never been opened before. Thank you, Jesus. And so I just wanted to hop on really quick and um share a little bit with you guys about, you know, um what he is openly just sharing with me in my prayer closet. And so, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are here for you. We are here to serve you, to serve your people, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you're calling up mighty warriors and leaders who are going to close the breach, oh God, that are going to be a restorer of the past, that's going to put us in a position where hearts are being restored from the leaders to the people, and that we're in a position where trust is being formed again, relationship is being formed again, love is being formed again, unity, harmony on one accord, oh God. God, I thank you that as we restore the paths, that it restores how we walk together after our hearts are healed. One nation under God. Lord, I thank you that this message comes out the way that you've been giving it to me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I may have to do a breakdown on multiple videos on this, y'all, but I'm going to break down some of the stuff to you today. So I was in um, 1 Timothy 2, which talks about the instructions of concerning prayer. What I found interesting is when you read through it, it's asking you to be in prayer and supplication, intercession for all mankind. Not only, only that, the second thing that struck me as... Um, interesting is he's telling you on behalf of kings and all those in authority so that we would lead quiet and tranquil life in reverence in all godliness y'all are you praying for our leaders are you stepping in the gap and being that person the lord can trust as he as he said he's looking for someone to stand in the gap we can stand in the gap through prayer. We can stand in the gap through resources. We can stand in the gap by creating and building what he's told us to create and build. We can stand in the gap by encouraging others, uplifting others as leaders are being reformed, revolutionized in America right now. To be able to stand firm and do as the Lord has told them to do. Faith by Whitney is one of those companies building those Holy Spirit leaders that are going to bridge the gap. It's going to be the ones that restore the breach and the way that we walk, the restore of the paths of the walkways so we can bring ourselves into a position of unity. Hallelujah. Where people are feeling like they are created with equality. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your spirit on this nation that we shall see this come to pass. And we're seeing it happen right now. But as you look back um, on history, it's literally speaking to the things that we're seeing. And so I just want to jump into this really quick and uh, not to mention that the Bible says there's only one mediator between man and God. That's Jesus Christ. We need Holy Spirit leaders. They must be in communion. They must be in conversation. They must be in relationship with Christ to be able to do these things, to walk this, these things out. Now, look at the, let's look at the past real quick. <laughs> so the Lord has been talking to me heavily this morning about the American Revolution, the Revolutionary War. Now, I'll be very honest with you guys. Um, American history wasn't something I was trying to, to study or to um, gain knowledge in, even in high school. I wasn't worried about that. I was worried about where, where's the next party at? Like, where where is it jumping off at? Like, where can I go hang out with my friends? Like, am I skipping class to have a beach day? That's where my mind was at. And you see how the, thank you, Lord. You see how the enemy worms its way in, like the Bible says, into those houses that are heavy laden with sin. 
and the enemy comes against you in your youth. Thank you, Lord, in your youth, in your youth, in your youth. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. I thank you, Lord, for waking up many leaders in this nation. And so we know that this, this is occurring, you guys, when uh, there's American patriots. And he's been speaking to me about these this word patriots. The Israelites were patriots, you guys. And in the 13 colonies, and tensions began to rise between the American patriots and the 13 colonies in British Columbia in the British rule, which they call the crown, which is the government. And as tensions begin to rise and American patriots begin to fight, go to war, battle, they come out victorious, independent in 1776, less than a year of them going to war. How do we war today? Prayer. And then obey, pray and obey. What is the Lord asking you to do in order to be a part of this great revolutionary, this new error, this new thing? Perceive it, y'all, perceive it. Somebody better catch this because I'm telling y'all, <laughs> when I caught this, I was like, okay, Lord, I, de I definitely, I'm understanding now. I am definitely understanding now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we see that France then enters in on the colonist side the people side in 1778 and this rolls us into a civil war and then we this goes into an international conflict well by france coming in thank you france by france coming in we uplift france actually right now lord i thank you lord that the seed that they had planted in 1778, Lord, that they will bear a harvest, that they will be known as a place of godliness, as a place of refuge, as a place that comes in and fights, puts on their armor to fight for those who are fighting for freedom, fighting for the truth, fighting against deception. Hallelujah. Thank you, France. We cover you with the blood of the lamb right now in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I call you back. I call you back right now underneath the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so as they come in, and this goes into an international conflict, you guys, British surrenders in 1781. And that's how Americans effectively won their independence. Won their independence. How are you winning your independence today? In your own house. This house. The temple. That the Lord resides in. That he dwells in. When he rebirths you. Through water. In a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now getting into freedom and keeping freedom. Is two different things y'all. I think that's where America got, got twisted and confused. And thrown off course. Thank you Lord. Derailed the train I just heard him say. Because once you get freedom, you got to fight for that freedom. But we know the battle is the Lord's. For us, when we go through deliverance as Christians and we get free of strongholds, of lust, desires, that, that worldly man, that old man, when we crucify that man, we have to continue to stay in that place through fighting through prayer, intercession, worship, devouring the word, eating the scroll, being obedient to God, beating your flesh into submit, submission like the Lord said, like Paul said through the Lord, or the Lord said through Paul. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Being around a community, fellowship that uphold the truth and nothing but the truth. Keeping our eyes pure, our ears pure. How do we do that? Through what we're listening to, what we're watching, what we're learning, what we are putting inside our system. Hallelujah. What we are saying, the things we are saying, creating our realities like the Lord says. It's the stuff that comes out of the mouth that pollutes the man. But we know from the heart, the abundance of the mouth speaks. So what are you putting in your heart? Is it purity? Is it holiness? Is it being sacred? Are you eating the word so you can tell the difference between common and uncommon, polluted and sacred? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we even see this 
talking about fighting for freedom as tensions are rising. If you feel tension right now in your in your temple, in your body, you should know it's time to gird up your loins and go to war. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Gird up your loins in your mind and go to war. Cast it down and allow the spirit to come in and heal you, deliver you, free you, mm, sanctify you. Hallelujah. Move you from a place of common into uncommon. From born in this world to born in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so we see even a, a war prior to that, which was the French and the Indian War called the Seven Years War, y'all. This was 1756 to 1763. And under this time, the British rule which is called the crown. No, we're not crowned by men. We're crowned by the heavenly father. We're crowned by the heavenly father with righteousness. If you guys just seen Faith by Whitney, we just put out a, a prophetic newsletter that we'll be doing each month. And that's what the Lord said. The first thing he said to me was in November, the leaders that were after his heart would be crowned with righteousness because they were seeking higher things in Colossians. Not seeking things of themselves. Thinking and seeking from heaven. The things of the spirit. 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 And so as this war is going on, new territories, like I said, are being brought underneath the British rule. The crown. Who were you crowned with? Who are you crowned from? If you are crowned from the world, I would highly suggest you cast down your crowns now in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And then after they're put underneath the power of the British rule, and kind of how the Bible talks about the Pharisees and the Sadducees putting you under a burden that they can't even lift a finger to take care of, holding back knowledge from you so you can't enter in, they began to put unpopular taxes on them, taxing the colonies. This is the Stamp Act, the Townsend Act, the, 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 the Tea Act in, in 1773. And you get heated protests from this. Why? Because the colonists, the people are saying there's a lack of representation in these decisions being made. Look at the world today. For the people, by the people. Are these laws, these policies being pushed in because they're of the goodness for the people? Are they being pushed in to uphold the power of a wicked kingdom, which will be brought down in Jesus Christ's mighty name? For he says he comes in and he brings a higher order. There's no devil in hell. No world system that can stand up against what the Lord is about to do in this nation. And I pray you want to be a part of that, a part of it. It's going to be a beautiful thing, you guys. But it will take sacrifice. It will take time. Your time getting the word, your time building relationship with the Lord. Time away from other things. Remember, a yes is a no to something and a no is a yes to something. That's what the Bible says. Let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. Anything else is from the evil man. Don't let confusion come in. Do you want to be a part of this? The Lord is literally saying, I'm inviting you <laughs> to be a part of the biggest revolution that's ever been seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm just reading through my notes because like I said, I am I am so excited that the Lord has pulled me back and to study this. And it's it's not to to um it's really just to put me in a position to be able to reflect on what the Bible says and why it says it. Thank you, Lord. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He didn't pull this stuff, just pull this stuff out, out of thin air. He knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. And so they started to demand the same rights as the British subjects. We have to stand up and demand 
the same rights that the government is, is, is taking on, is bestowing upon themselves, but not on us. Come on now, think about it. Look at the news, look around. They're telling us to cover up our mouth. The most important thing that we have that creates reality. The Lord spoke the world into existence. How can we speak things to an existence? How can we go to war in our prayer closets? How can we bring life to death situations? Power, power on high to come to come on to those places, to infiltrate those places. If our mouths are covered, meanwhile, they're on TV being bolder than bold with no mask on. Traveling the world. No mask at all. Hallelujah. And so then what we see is, we see British opens fire on the colonists. It's them who took action. Let it not be repeated. Let it be the church. Let it be the leaders. Let it be the government officials. Let it be the businessmen. Let it be the community activists. Let it be the advocates. Let it be those who are in leadership that stand up and say enough is enough. And we want to come with you with love and grace. And we want to change this race. This is not the race the Lord has asked us to run. Hallelujah. And so I'll wrap it up with this. You see these, um, the Boston massacre after this and five people were, were killed, right? And, and, and that just brings me back to representation in the media. I'm not saying five people is not a lot of people. What I am saying is how they, they represented it as being a massacre, you guys. They try to create a narrative in your mind that is untrue. Hallelujah. And so then you have these people from Boston dressed up as Mohawk Indians who board British ships and dump 342 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor, which is the Boston Tea Party. Jesus, 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 show us how to battle and fight that's pleasing to you, O oh God. Lord, let us not lay down underneath a deceptive kingdom, a wicked, evil kingdom, but let us rise in the spirit, rise in glory, and fill this entire world with the knowledge of Christ. Lest we would save many, many souls from being eternally burned, eternal damnation into eternal life. The Lord does not take any pleasure in the wicked perishing. He says that. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of Christ including these leaders that are backing a system that is full of hypocrisy, that is full of greediness, that is full of pride. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for dropping this gem on me today, Lord. Lord, continue to open up my mind. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Help me be that leader to speak truth, Lord. Give me parables and examples like you did today to continue to speak on this, to bring light to this, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a cleaning and a wiping coming to this nation. Open up your hearts and your minds to be one of those individuals that the Lord can come in and possess your land and kick out the enemies so you can be a part of what's happening to bring us into a position of ushering the king in and bringing in a new Jerusalem. 
Peace and love to you all. And I probably will continue to build on this video as he is opening up knowledge to me about past circumstances that may evolve into bridging our future. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Amen.